to service, we're going to use this um, exit here, not passing by the other side. We're going to pass by this, this way at the end of service. Secondly, um, our board, uh, which was taking place uh, uh, last Thursday, we agree that the, the officers who are selling, who were selling this year, are going to end uh, in June. So now we're going to start the um, appointing nominating committee. We not yet set up the date, but uh, the reason why I'm saying this is to request the church members to pray about it. To pray about it because this is a very, very important uh, stage where we need to appoint the officers who be uh, serving God during this coming um, year. So we have to pray about it and uh, let the Holy Spirit work in us and especially encourage people to be willing to serve. People must be willing to serve because if you don't stand and you don't serve, God, and you don't feel as if you are God's servant, uh, you might not be in a very good standing spiritual. <laughs> so we need all willing to, to serve God and be um, happy because it is a privilege. It is a privilege to be appointed on, on, on church position. It is really a privilege, and some, sometimes we refuse to, and we reject such a privilege. So we want to encourage um, and pray God that in the Holy Spirit be uh, uh, encouraging us to, to, to have this willing, willingness to serve, to serve God. Um, uh, those are a few announcements that I was having. Um, our preacher today is a brother Sibanda, he's coming from Cape, 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 Cape Central. Um, we will not be handling cash. Uh, so if you have an offering and you do not have a tile on the with you, just signal for one of the young men there to bring you an envelope so you can put your offering in an envelope, okay? You don't have to put your name down because it is an offering, but put the amount there. And of course, if you have your tithe, put your tithe and your name. Okay, sorry. Anybody you need an envelope? Yes, there's one at the back, please. Thank Sorry. you, um, may God bless you for as we worship together. Good morning and happy Sabbath, and we want to welcome our online viewers as well. Uh, we're going to have a blessed week so far. We'll only be having one song, which is Showers of Blessing, hymn number 195. 195. Oh, 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 oh,
Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are thankful for this opportunity to be in your house of worship. We thank you as we need water and you want to bring us to vegetation out there. We are thankful for that. We are thankful for the many things that you've done for us individually, in spite of the record of each and every one of our lives. Lord, you've been good to us. We want to praise you and glorify you. For all the benefits that you show to us. We want to humble ourselves before you, asking you to please speak to us in this hour. May the spirit that has inspired the word inspire our hearts and our minds and broaden our vision and increase our faith. May we experience that saving grace that will lead us to heaven and peace. We pray and humble us with this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For our scripture reading, we're going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 12. Genesis, chapter 12, um, verse 1. The Bible says, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, 
Take thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. May God bless the living of Let's all stand as we go to open our divine service with the human number for peace. Someone is sick, or so that you can pray for him. Um, I remember um, hearing that uh, Vena is sick. Okay, it's my family. Okay, it's my family for the rose. Okay. So if there's no any other request, we can hold you down as we work in our kind gracious loving God. We are before you this morning. We have come to worship you. We thank you for this privilege that you have given us to be able to appear before the throne of mercy, knowing that we don't even deserve such a privilege. Lord, thank you for loving us 
for keeping us safe so that we can come and meet together and worship you this morning. Lord, we want to invite your presence to be with us as we go to worship you. And cleanse us through the blood of your begotten Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, make us right so that we can become your true children. As Lord, we heard, there are some of us who could not make it because of for different reasons. There are those who are sick, who suffer from uh, sickness. Lord, we pray that you may lay your hand upon each one of them. Lord, we pray for Mary, as you know. We have been always praying for her. And we believe and trust that you've been with her, encouraging her, even though she is uh, under distress due to her sickness. And we want to bring you, uh, Sister Vena, you know where is she suffering from? And Lord, you are able to heal whatever sickness she suffered from. You want also to bring Sister Ventessin, his family. Lord, we pray that you may continue to comfort the family and to bring the hope in the family. And uh, remind that one day when Jesus comes, your promise is true that you come again. And when you come, you take all who believe in you in your name to a whole place where, where there will never be suffering anymore and where there's no death. Lord, we long to be in that place and help us to be faithful to you and help us to stand firm in your truth so that Lord, when Jesus comes, we may not be ashamed to see coming to see him coming, rather to be happy as we will be meeting our Savior. Lord, at this time we want to pray for Brother Sibanda, which is whom you have sent to a one day church. Deliver the message that you've given me. We pray, Lord, that you may touch his lips. We pray that you may give him words to say. And we pray, we pray also that this word may be fruitful to all of us hearing this word and be a light which will be. Um, in our ways, which ways leading us to our salvation. We want to pray for those who did not come for um, some reasons, you may not be able to come because of business or other commitments. We also want to pray that the Holy Spirit may take this word to them wherever they are. And we want to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, Church. Our other three readings will come from the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 24. And the Bible says, One person gives freely, yet again, even more. Another withholds, but come to poverty. To emphasize, through giving, can one be truly blessed with really wealth, including monetary and emotional gain. In this way, I would like to ask the deacon and deaconess to collect the morning files and offerings. Thank you, Father, for the privilege that you've given us to be in thy house. As we've given this word, we have given it from, for, his, for your word. Therefore, bless those who have given, and please give heart to those who want to do so, but they could not do. This is pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Are you were happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I hope so. And uh, I believe so. Because we've been away for so long, and now we, we are so privileged to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to take this uh, opportunity to welcome um, everyone, uh, regular members. Um, it is really a, 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 a privilege, a privilege for us to be in the house of the Lord. And we need to feel the presence of our Lord and praise His name. Um, we are also um, a privilege to have, to have visitors. It is so good to always have visitors. Uh, I see um, um, uh, some of our visitors, I see Hattilus, Hattilus is uh, from Demo. Uh, we are so happy to see her choosing one day to come and uh, fellow, fellow ship together. We also have a busy, um, she's a lighthouse, but she's out. Was here, but I, I think she's still around here. And um, Nasha, Nasha, um, can you listen? Uh, she, said, she, she chose to come to one day. Um, I think it's the old name that I could pick up. Is anyone else? I did, I did not mention the name. Can you please uh, raise up so that we can work on you? Oh. Okay, I see the young men here. Welcome. Uh, we are so happy to see all of you coming and um, we worship together. Um, I'm so 
I'm happy also to welcome Brother Wishes to Banda. Um, is one who was appointed to, to, to give us the break of love, bread of love. Svanda uh, is coming from the uh, church central. We are happy to see him and uh, also want to thank him for accepting our invitation to come to One Day Church and uh, share with us the message that God has given me. Um, so at this point, I want to welcome him and uh, uh, give him a, 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 a space so that he can give us what the Lord has given him. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, yeah, the week didn't begin well for me. Uh, I almost missed um, my first day at work, but I something pressing required me to be at work and I survived. I had a very terrible cold last weekend, but uh, thankfully I'm well and I made it here by God's grace. Um, let us pray before we start. Lord, we come before you yet again, asking you to speak to us through your word. Lord, hide me behind the cross. May everyone, including myself, with you, page out scripture. We will listen attentively. We will learn from the men of old how they walk with you so that we can walk faithfully in Jesus. I want to greet you the most that are online. Um, if you can allow me to take my mask off and put it back before I sit down. Um, I want to share with you um, from the book of Genesis the, the call that God gave to, to, to Abraham and everyone in his household. I believe there are lessons for us today from that call. Um, I titled my, my message, Get Out. That is the title of our sermon. Now, when we Um, hello. Um, hello. Um, hello. I'm sorry for the glitch, everybody. Um, so they are trying to sort that out at church right now. And as soon as they are sorted, it, um, it will be showing on here again. I'm sorry for this. Can you please give us just two minutes? Thank you.
in the meaning of uh, Terra, the name Terra means one who delay. So there are lessons for us in the life of this man, the father of Abraham. Uh, we were reading during this the lesson study that God has called us out of darkness. And it means we must do what? Come out of darkness. Ur was a very dangerous place because people worshiped idols. People had no regard of God's commandments. And that's why God was saying to the family of Terah, come out, get out. It's not safe here. Go out and go to the land of Canaan. But Terah, unfortunately, as his name means, he delayed. And the Bible says he died in the land of Haran. They began with the best of intentions. When the call came to get out, they started off. The Bible says, you know, they left Ur, all of their household. Everyone is mentioned there as a family, they left. But they didn't get to the final destination. And I want to pause there and ask many of us, who have come out of darkness, if we come out of the things of darkness, or are still the things of darkness found in our lives? Are we still practicing certain tendencies which are practiced in darkness, or we are living by the light which we have been called to walk into? It is very dangerous not to get up. We must get out of the things of the world and become God's people. Now, the second call came again in chapter 12. After Terah had died, God comes back again to Abraham and says, Now the Lord had said, You see, notice what the Bible said. The Lord had, because he, in the first call in chapter 11, God comes and repeats himself again to Abraham. Then now the Lord had said, Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. God comes to Abraham and says to him again, get up. Even today, God is still speaking to us in many ways through his word, through the Holy Spirit, through divine providence. God's hand is seen, I believe, in each and every one of our lives. We are living in an age of this pandemic. God has been merciful to us. Of course, all of us have been moved out of comfort zone, but God is still with us in all of this. This is not a time to find an excuse for not coming to church or for not worshiping God daily in our own homes. You know, because of the limitations we have, we only have two hours to come in fellowship. But that should not become an excuse for us to go back to Ur. We must come out because where we are going, it's very near. Jesus is coming soon. And these things of you know us experiencing the pandemic, God in prophecy has foretold them to us in Matthew 24 that these things are going to come to pass. And when they come to pass, beat up the loins and get ready for the second coming. And not only getting ready, but we must become um, ambassadors for God to call others to come out of the things of this world. This world is not our home. We are here because of the accident of sin that took place. We are here because God's plan was interrupted. And this is a temporary phase. We need to go to Canaan and we're going to be saved there. It was more dangerous for Abraham to live with his own people than to live with the worst people on the earth. The land of his nativity was what? Was good. But God says, leave, come out of this place. God takes us out of the things of this world. Sometimes he takes us out of family in that process. Sometimes he takes us out of the favorable surrounding and we live the way he has commanded us. Ours is to what? To obey like what Abraham did. And God knew that Abraham, for him to become a peculiar person, you know, there's always been a remnant, you know, from the time of the fall down through the ages 
this God has always preserved people to become his representative. And God calls Abraham. He takes him to a land that he was going to give him as an inheritance. But the call was not only for him to just go there. God wanted him to be in an environment where he can focus only on him. Because the call in and of itself was a trying call. Abraham was older. It's not easy to relocate when you are, you know, when you are older. When you are young and energetic, you can frequently relocate anywhere. That the call was trying Abraham. The call was trying him as to whether he loved God more than he loved at the end of his nativity. The call was to set him apart for God. And if God has established a relationship with us, we are his people. He wants us to be faithful to him. He wants us to love him because he created us, because he has given us everything that we need. When you look over your life, when you look over your current circumstances, God has been faithful and good to each and every one of us. The presence of problems doesn't mean that God is not good. He is good even in the midst of things not going well. So Abraham was tried by the call. The call was to set him apart for God. The call was to reveal the glory of God to him. If we read uh, further in the book of Genesis, and God says to Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name a blessed name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Get out. I will have these plans for you. That's what the message of God to Abraham. Even to us today. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, For you are a, a, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a people whom God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. God wants us to proclaim. He wants, He has blessed us, He wants us to be a blessing. I believe all of us are here, all of us are, are, are observing the Sabbath because we've been called and accepted the call. We are blessed, and God wants us to be what? A blessing. Are you a blessing to the people that you need? If you completely come out, Abraham hated the call. He left. He went out. When we go to the book of Joshua, chapter 24, God called Abraham out because he wanted to save him from the idols. He wanted to reveal his, reveal his glory to him, even to us. Let us not be comfortable being nominal Christians, but let us plead for that same glory which God revealed to Abraham, even in our circumstances, in our pathway of duty, God's glory is being manifested. Only if we have taken it to the fall and we have him up. But if we are in the midst of the noise of who noises of who of the ur of this world, we will not hear the voice of God, even when he calls to us. Or we will hear, but we will not understand. So God calls us to get out of the things of this world. This pandemic should teach us to have that individual and Swever in faith in God. You remember Daniel started with Meshach and Abednego. They were just a few group in a strange land. Church was church comprised only out of them as, as, as the fewer boys. But they never compromised. They called upon the name of the Lord even more. Same applies to us. While we do not have the full privilege we have of fellowshipping on Sabbath, where we are, we need to call upon the name of the Lord. God will reveal himself unto us. He will bless us and make us a blessing. Even in these times, God will do a wonderful and miraculous work. But we need to get up of the things of this life. We need to take time to focus on the things that matter most in life. Studying God's word, conforming our lives to its principles, being advocates of its faithfulness and truthfulness in each and every transaction of our own lives. God called Abraham, he heeds to the call. I'm reminded of Joshua 24, um, verse 2. God says, uh, Joshua speaks at the end of his life, 
and um, after they conquered and settled in Canaan, we remember here in chapter 12, God promises Abraham that you shall be a great nation. Now let's fast forward and come to Joshua. We'll come back to the book of Genesis. Joshua said to all the people in verse 2 of chapter 34, um, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood, even in, the in, in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. Generations after, the reminder is brought to the children of Israel as a whole. That their fathers did what? Their forefathers did what? They said, Father God. They did not completely come out of the things of the world. Even when they were living, they were dragging the idols with them. And, they, and, and Terah, along the way to Canaan, they stood by and settled in the wrong place. Some of us want to be half dead. Christians. He wants to be half the Lord's and half the world's. We want to be half the world's uh, and half the Lord's. It's not going to work. We will be overcome. We will give up the faith if we do not become holy on the Lord's side. Verse 3 says, And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. God is faithful. He did not call Abraham to Canaan and abandon him there. When God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy loving, I will give you rest. I can assure and tell you that we all can experience that rest. When he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, when we desire and seek to learn of God, God will lighten every burden in this life. He will make the things of all very unattractive, such that we will set our backs on them. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the land in, in your own time, even Terah, the father of Abra, and the father of Naho, and they saved other gods. Compromise is possible. Compromise is possible. The wheat and the tears are here in the church. They profess to be God's people, but they are wheat and they are tears. But it is not the Lord's desire that we shall have these two times. But it is the case. But I'm emphasizing on it so that you and I can make an informed decision. Let go of the things of the world. One of the biggest challenges we have in this artificial civilization, you know, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have um, within our hands the reach of information. These gadgets we have now can, you know, bring any type of information to us. And to young and old, I wonder what you spend time doing. What idols are you having? What idols are you bowing down to? How do you spend your time? What do you spend the bulk of your time? Do you sit at the feet of Jesus and seek to hear what words he has to say to you every day? Before your day begins, in the midst of your business, throughout the day, do you pause and think and reflect that am I still doing everything to the glory of God? We need to constantly set our eyes on Jesus in order to completely get out. What do you invest your time in? When you do an audit of your time, do you feel that in the first six days of labor, you dedicated them in spending time seeking to know God even deeper? Or we are chasing the riches of this world and we are taking preeminence over the things of eternity. It was very dangerous to live in Haran, the same way it was dangerous to live in. The safe place is where God says one must go. When God says, let go of this, it is the safety comes in letting go of it. But when we cling to it, we will die in this day. And God calls us to come to Him. Let's run through the history. Now we know that Abraham left after he left his sergeant. 
um, this five says of chapter 12. So Abraham, this four up. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. The Lord went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. It's good to obey. You see it in the life of Abraham. We also have to obey God. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance and souls that they had brought in Haran, and they went forth to go unto the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. Amen. What an example is set here for us. A man who heard the voice and the call of God. He did not say, no, I buried my father here, so I need to stay here. I want to be buried here. This is an important place for me. No. He left and obeyed the word of the Lord. Sometimes you want to justify doing the wrong thing. You know, I know young people start saying, no. We must have fun, you know. We must do this, we must do that. When those of experience, when those of experience point you to the word of God, cling to it, listen to what the word of God says, and do that, and don't do what is right in your own mind. It will not be well with you if you do that. We know that as we started on, um, you know, the devil swing circumstances, and there was a famine. And Abraham ran away to, he went to Egypt to go and hide there. But God did not abandon him. Whatever circumstances came along the way, Abraham clinged to God. Of course, he compromised when he got to Egypt and lied and says Sarah was his sister. But God didn't give up on him. He overrode circumstances and told the Pharaoh that this man is a prophet. Sometimes, we get discouraged. But when discouragement sets up, we should remember the source of our strength. We should remember the one who can uphold us. We should remember the one through whom his grace can carry us through. One thing about Abraham, all his faults resulted in his strength being, in his strength and faith being renewed because he did not turn his back upon God. While he stumbled, while waiting for the birth of Isaac, he did not give up on the promises that God had made for him. That through him, all the nations of the earth were going to be blessed. He cooperated with God. Let us follow God every step of the way. Even when you stumble and fall, don't wake up and be overwhelmed with guilt and resentment. Wake up and call upon the name of the Lord. Still remember his promises that they are true at that trying time. As the book of Hebrews 7, verse 25 says that Christ is able to save us to the uttermost. In those times when we are discouraged, that's when we need to call upon the name of the Lord. And I know it's not easy. You know, when I, I, I have compromised on something or when I have neglected certain responsibilities, I would feel guilty. Even the appetite for prayer goes away. But when I start that one step of saying, Lord, please be merciful unto me. I am able to even cry out even louder. And God has saved me in many instances. And I believe that I'm not the only one who identifies with this uh, setup. So God called Abraham, and Abraham left and obeyed God. Now, fast forward later, Isaac and his two sons, Jacob and Esau. Uh, there's always strife among God's people. Uh, you know, Jacob and Esau. Always had strife. But, um, and Jacob was sent and he was told to come back. Jacob was sent back to go and get a wife. And he was told, don't stay there. Go get a wife. Don't stay in Haran. Come back to Canaan. This is where the Lord wants you to be. We know the character of Laban. And it shows the behavior of people that lived in Haran. Jacob found a beautiful one, but he was deceived and ended up having two. That's the character of people that live in Haran. And God did not want them to stay there. You stay in Haran, you will worship idols, spiritually speaking. You stay, you laugh, you get entertained by the things of the world, you will end up being swallowed up by them. Even when you look at spiritual things, you look them through the eyes of worldly understanding. 
But when we come out of the things of this world, the Holy Spirit takes control of our hearts. It leads us. It guides us. It keeps us. Dangerous in Haran. Idols are still a danger even today. They were danger back then. It was, they were the reason why God said, come out. Get out of this place. You will forget God. Idols made people to forget God. And worship men made image. Now we know the story. When, Abba, when Jacob bought his wife, he came back. And she stole his father's gods. And when the father came looking for them in Genesis chapter 28, uh, verse 10 to 16. Um, sorry, um, that, that's a different text. But we know that when they were coming back, uh, Russell stole his father's gods, put them in an ark camel and set on them. That's God's people. The temptations will always come, but we must learn to depend upon God. He said, right? We must grow. Situations, circumstances in which we find ourselves in should lead us to depend more upon God, to surrender more. There was never a point, even when Abraham was told now, go and sacrifice Isaac. It was still God's strength that carried him to be able to go to Mount Moriah. There should never be a time where we develop self confidence, where we think we can walk in the spark of our own kindness. That's the most dangerous thing. We should always humbly walk in God's speed, in God's principle. We should always seek to know what is the will of the Lord pertaining my life at this stage and walk in God's ways. We know that Jacob was charged before he got to Haran in Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 16. God comes, dreams a ladder descending up and down, and God told him, This is the safest, this is the safe place. Uh, where you are, I'm going to make this place my house. And we know, remember, Jacob making a vow unto the Lord, saying that if the Lord shall be with me in this way that I go and keep me until I come back to my father's house, then the Lord will be my God. And in all that he blesses me with, I will surely keep it in. It's dangerous in the world. Let us be worthy to God's people. Not half peace. We are living in a very dangerous time in the history of the world. The world is not safe. The world has become like the Canaanites. The evil is alarming. The world has become a typical haram. Now, I quoted the text here and I see I did not put in um, the actual text. It says, The world lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We are living in a time of serious deception. And the deception is not out there, it can also happen in here. Where well, we want to just remain in the church as nominal Christians entertained by the things of the world, living by the standards of the world, in dress, in eating habits, in forms of entertainment. Let us be careful. Those things take the place in the mind that should be occupied by the women. We need to find recreation in the things God has made and created. Things that stimulate us to nobler aims. For example, um, I know that nature is one of the lessons in which God wants to teach us. It can be recreation, it can be in a form of entertainment, but that stimulates to nobler aims. When you look at the trees, when you look at the water, the waves coming back and forth, it's just that we want things that have instant gratification. We change it to this and that and that and that and that in a short space of time. You know, we are, you know, something that plays with your emotions. One minute you're smiling and laughing, the next you're not sure what's going to happen. That is very best bet for our souls. But God's things carry us on a journey of observation, of reflecting, of looking and seeing the goodness of God. But the things of men are tantalizing. You know, they just go in zigzag and they are appealing to the color of God. 
may our minds be surrendered and redeemed by the Lord. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, as we draw to a close. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Remember, Terah died in Haran instead of having left and went to Canaan. The choice is ours whether we will be fully and fully become the Lord's or we will continue to cling to the things of this world. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, and, uh, and many people shall go and say, Come you and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. It is God's desire that his children will live by every word that comes out of his mouth. His spirit is constantly working in our hearts to help us to will and to do of his good pleasure. Ours is to open the heart heavenward, the mind heavenward, the ears heavenward, and shut all of, all of the avenues of the soul in terms of anything that is down there. The choice is ours. Let us be up. And this responsibility to get out is twofold. Abraham was told, I will bless you and make you to be a blessing. It is our duty also to get out and warn others to also do what? Get out. We are struggling to come up with ways in which we can even evangelize in this COVID time. It's because we need to be evangelized ourselves to a great extent. We need enlightenment. With the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to do the work, it is our duty as families, as individuals, to labor for God. But we can't labor for God when we have not come out of war. We can't tell others to come out of what we have not come out of. We will not confidently say it. We will not be able to say that Paul says in Romans 1 verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. We need that sense. I appeal to each and every one of you, wherever you are online, here in the church, let us become God's people in the true sense of the word. Let us not be his, his by word of mouth, just by profession, but let us be his in word and in deed. Let us model the life of Abraham, as it says, as Christ was warning the Pharisees and the Sadducees during those days that, you know, many shall come. And sit down with Abraham and Isaac. But the children of the kingdom will be cast out. If we continue to compromise, if we continue to live, to become lukewarm Christian, if we neglect the call to fear God and give glory to his name, we are going to be cast out. You know, the first angel's message, either we take heed to the call and we proclaim it even louder. We suffer the consequences of this neglect and face the wrath of the dead end of this. I appeal to you, as the word also appeals to myself. Let us be holy gods. Let us eat. May the Lord get the reward. Thank you very much, brother, for the message. As we close up our service of the day, we're going to sing in number 246.
Thank you. 